What's going on, preppers? Many of us saw this coming. I know you guys have seen it. They want us to think that the price of fuel, gas, and diesel prices have gone down as a result of oil prices that the current presidential administration drive down the price of gas? Did the current administration drive down the price of oil? Personally, I don't buy it. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know that a number of different companies, um, particularly in the uh, side hustle arena, side business arena, small business arena, uh, you've got companies like uh, DoorDash and Uber Eats, they used to offer a surcharge for fuel since the cost of fuel has drastically gone up as well as the cost of food at the grocery stores as well as the cost of rent interest rates have been going up mortgage rates have going up credit card interest rates are going up everything's going up we know this but the fuel surcharge that was added onto a lot of these rideshare um, tabs to help drivers compensate for the excessive cost of fuel uh, thankfully, we're not experiencing fuel shortages and gas shortages, but the surcharge helped a lot of the uh, deliver those in delivery businesses to supplement their expenses or supplement their the revenue for their business, supplement the income to offset the added expense of fuel. Well, many of these companies have removed that, and we've seen droves of people deciding to literally quit and stop delivering because they couldn't afford it. It wasn't worth it. The money's not there. Part-time workers finding it very difficult to even make it make sense to go to work. They say that we have a labor shortage, which we do, uh, and I'm seeing it in a lot of the different restaurants and certain uh, retail stores, certain grocery stores, Walmart, Target, uh, Costco sometimes, not so much Costco, but I see it. But they want us to think that <clears throat> And I don't know if it's the midterm elections coming up. Maybe they're trying to put a, a good word, make it look like big things are happening thanks to the current administration. And I, I don't care who's in office. I think it's all bold, personally. You know, I don't care, you know, uh, if you're a Democratic or Republican. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I think that they all ultimately fail the American people every four years. It's just the way it is. But they want us to think that they're doing something. All right. Okay. So gas prices have continued to decline since essentially reaching a, an all-time high of $5 and change in the middle of June. And this is the average gas price cost across the nation. And uh, I actually read an article not too long ago was saying that, you know, if the average person who's fueling right now, if you drive like a Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord, you know, a basic bread and butter uh, uh, four-cylinder sedan, which are generally considered fairly economic vehicles, you're spending like a hundred hundred and twenty five dollars a week just to fill up your car um, and that that's 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 insane you spend hundred and twenty five dollars a week on gas you're dropping five hundred dollars a month five hundred dollars a month you're dropping what six what's that six thousand dollars a year just to put gas in your car you're buying six thousand dollars worth of liquid it's crazy when you think about it and then you add couple that with the the average car payment of around seven hundred dollars a month it's no wonder why the average American you know making forty five thousand dollars a year in income is struggling right now credit card bills I think the average uh, last I read because the number keeps going up you guys could you know let me know if your situation sounds similar but the average credit card balance right now is around ten thousand dollars for the average American now that's the average and, and all these are just averages all of these are averages. You got to prepare, guys. You got to you got to prep. It, 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 we see this is coming and we're going to encounter an economic collapse. And it's going to more than likely stem from debt. It's going to stem from excessive debt, uh, reduced wages or at least reduced buying power of the wages of the, uh, you know, whether you receive a paycheck as a W-2 employee, whether you're a contractor, a 1099 worker, or a small business owner. <clears throat> these expenses are hitting people hard and it's hitting the lower to middle income individuals the worst 
It's just, that's just the way it is. Uh, and it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to stay in low income uh, revenue ranges. We can bring it up. We can bring it up, but you got to know you can. I'm going to continue to bring more information to you guys that I think is helpful uh, in your ability to increase your income, increase your net worth. Uh, but they want us to think that gas prices have gone down thanks to oil, thanks to, you know, thanks to big oil, oil prices, right? But a lot of people don't realize is that there's a number of reasons why you've got oil fluctuations. I mean, one of them is that uh, you've got some businesses that rely heavily on fuel. And a lot of people don't realize that these companies, let's just say uh, Delta, for example. I don't know if you guys have seen Delta's stock recently on the stock market. Uh, Southwest Airlines. Oh, man, did you guys see uh, Spirit Airlines? They they landed, I think it was Spirit. I'm, I'm, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Spirit Airlines, I believe, landed in um, Hartsfield-Jackson Airport or one of these airports and their brakes or landing gear burst into flames. And uh, I don't think anybody died on that one, but yet another crisis, you know, is it safe to fly anymore? But, you know, you got airlines that are gonna spend hundreds of millions of dollars on fuel every single year. Well, guess what? There are traders that can heavily influence the price of fuel, that ultimately inf influence the price of gas, that impacts inflation. Um, your CPI that they're reporting, or CPI, sitting at the most recent update, which was 9.1% for June. Um, the Fed's trying, or at least they're saying that they're trying to bring down inflation. But a lot of people have lost confidence in the Fed. I think it's possible that they could bring it down, but you know, confidence in the American in the consumers is waning. That's all I can say. Um, Price of gas per gallon, at least for unleaded, 87 octane, you know, the cheap stuff, right? The regular unleaded dropped down to $4.60 on Thursday, which was a pretty steep decline from the all-time high of a little over $5 a gallon that we had hit in, in, in the middle of June. But it's still very high. And, you know, that's, they're saying, you know, obviously, you know, it's the driving season and it's given, you know, this is due to motorists, um, uh, hitting the roads for travel and vacation, taking advantage of those uh, those credit card deals, those credit card offers, those 0% credit cards, uh, many of those credit cards offering travel discounts and, 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 and bonuses. Yeah, so uh, I guess we can thank the credit card companies for incentivizing people to uh, spend more money on travel. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people who have been uh, cooped up, as a matter of fact, I'm seeing Kevin's channel, Kevin Prepper, uh, he goes by Kevin, but some, sometimes if I just type in Kevin Prepper or Kevin SHTF, uh, it's easier to find him when I search him on YouTube, but he's been traveling quite a bit. So I hope he's racking up those credit card uh, points and uh, getting discounts on all that fuel that he's racking up for that road trip. And uh, I'm really appreciating and, and getting a lot out of his content. So that's that's really awesome. And um, <clears throat> I feel like I'm kind of a part of the journey. Uh, they're going all up and down the, the uh, I think right now they're going down the west coast of the United States right now. They're just seeing a lot of cool stuff. So uh, if you guys are able to check them out, make sure to check them out. Uh, it's really cool. He's showing some different uh, type of content that I don't really see anywhere else. So uh, definitely check them out. Um, but yeah, you know, so now, you know, you, you got fuel prices. They're also tied to the cost of oil. We know that. Crude is responsible for more than half of the cost of retail gasoline at least you know um, according to the energy information administration but the price of crude the price of crude oil has actually dropped below a hundred dollars a barrel this month which was the first time since uh, since April so that would absolutely help to bring down the price of, of, of gas but there's a number of different things that impact the price of fuel I'm going to pause this video because there's a loud truck about to go by. Um, never mind, I'll just let them drive by. <clears throat> All right, that wasn't as loud as I thought it was going to be. Anyway, so cost of fuel, right? You got big companies like airline companies. You got uh, Delta, Spirit Airlines, uh, American Airlines, all these different airline companies. They 
they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars at a minimum on fuel. Big Fortune 500, S&P 500 corporations. <coughs> and uh, then you got Amazon. You got the Amazons of the world. You got Walmart. Not so much Walmart, because a lot of times Walmart uses third-party uh, delivery trucking companies to uh, distribute products from um, warehouse to to their uh, retail locations, but uh, certainly Amazon, certainly Amazon, FedEx, and uh, UPS. Uh, if you look at if you look at those companies, and actually if you look at the stock market, you can read their uh, 10K reports. Actually, shows how much money they're spending in certain areas of their businesses. Well, fuel is a massive component to their expenses, alongside with labor expenses, em employees benefits, 401ks healthcare plans, insurance, uh, and whatnot. So how do these companies remain profitable and attempt to uh, offset the cost of fuel while maintaining healthy profit margins? Because remember, at the end of the day, you know, these big corporations, uh, the goal for them is to remain profitable, keep the CEOs making millions of dollars every single year, Many of them getting paid in the form of stock options, so you want to keep the stock price high because otherwise the CEO is technically making less money if the stock price is down because their compensation is tied to the stock price, which is another video. Um, it's another wealth building video that I, I definitely want to share with you guys because a lot of money to be made there. and there's, there's no reason why the average American should be struggling, especially when you're trying to prep, and prepping is expensive, so if you could leverage some of the benefits of making money from the stock market or making money through some kind of maybe a small business or side hustle or something like that it certainly help a lot of people out I'll be sure to share more information on that but so when your business and your and your company your organization is so heavily dependent on uh, fuel you you're not flying an airplane without jet fuel you're not flying uh, packages across the United States uh, for deliveries without jet fuel if you're uh, you know FedEx or UPS you're not carrying uh, passengers to their tourists and travel destinations without jet fuel if you're Delta if you're Spirit Airlines if you're Continental Airlines if you're American I was about to say American Express American Airlines um, so one thing that a business can do is they can raise their prices but then you know of course raising your prices makes you less competitive unless all of your other competitors are equally raising their prices and then that way you're kind of like raising the bar t together that way you're not raising your because if you raise your let's just say you know you're competing as an airline if I'm Delta if I raise my prices um, but Southwest doesn't raise theirs people are gonna not fly with Delta the people are gonna fly with Southwest if they're cheaper so but the, but it, it's different if all the airlines are graduating or raising their prices for their airline tickets together well how do you do that well what they do is they manipulate the price of oil a lot of people don't realize that but you know when, when whenever you see a lot of uh, stock market movement for example you may see uh, a, a company might be Apple it might be AMC stock it might be Apple stock it might be Tesla stock uh, Amazon stock it happens all the time traders depending upon how much capital they have available to them if they're trading together as a team or collectively trading together, they can move the market. You ever notice that sometimes a, a company like you know Walmart or Costco releases amazing earnings for the quarter, but for whatever reason the stock price goes down? A lot of times that's market manipulation. It's a team of traders or maybe even one trading house with a lot of money tied up in this stock and they'll just sell a bunch. And this selling, this selling pressure overwhelms the market and it drives the price down, similar to the housing market. If too many people decide to sell their house all at once in a condensed area, the real estate uh, demand will eventually be overwhelmed by inventory. And so if the demand can't keep up with the inventory because too much houses hit the market at one time, generally what will happen is that uh, in order to get the sales to take place, people have to lower their prices. And so that happens a lot of times with traders. Now the flip side to it is, is they can also drive the price up. And we've seen this. I've been watching this. Um, I don't know how many of you guys uh, have caught my previous videos where I talked about this, the manipulation and why we should expect higher gas prices in the future. But the traders, when they were buying up these oil contracts when the prices were low, 
it was the exact same thing that happened in the housing market. They drove up prices. So it wasn't just oil. It wasn't just oil uh, supply, supply chain demands and um, supply chain constraints. It wasn't even a productivity problem 100%. It was a lot to do with, um, yes, demand did pick up, but a lot of these oil traders, billion dollar hedge funds, uh, bought these oil contracts at low prices. And the more that they bought into these oil contracts, it was just like the housing market, right? There's only so much, there's only so many. And so when that demand just started shooting up really, really aggressively, it drove up that oil contract price and it raised the price of oil for anyone who was trying to buy it. Same thing that these, um, these, these, these big airline uh, companies do. Um, they will invest in these oil contracts. They will buy these, 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 these fuel contracts and basically it allows them to hedge the price of fuel. And so that's a part of their business strategy. And through hedging, they're buying contracts. Through buying contracts, you're driving up demand. And this demand is not what they're talking about on the news. They're dr these, this has nothing to do with you fueling up at the pump. They're driving up the price of the contracts. And the contract is literally what dictates the price of oil. And then of course, that influences the price of gas because Gas is a derivative of the oil. So, you know, we end up paying crazy amounts for fuel at the gas pump because, you know, stuff that's going on basically on the equity markets, on the stock market. And so it's like, even if you don't invest in the stock market, which you should, because you're missing out on a tremendous wealth building opportunity, uh, by not paying attention to what's going on in the stock market, you're not properly prepared for what's happening in the future or what will happen in the future. Most people, most of the... I would say the majority of the savviest investors that I've ever met have always said the stock market is a uh, basically it's like a crystal ball. It's very forward looking. Uh, it has a very forward looking behavior. And so a lot of what happens in the future is based on, excuse me, a lot of what happens on the stock market or in the stock market is based on future expectations. And so we can oftentimes see a lot of what's going to happen by paying attention by paying attention to what's happening in the stock market and the stories that are surrounding the actions and the part and, and the activities that we see. And then that's how we can attempt to get ahead and, and be better prepared and be better preppers. So my brother says it all the time, you know, it, 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 these are all parts of a whole. So. You gotta put the pieces together. And the more the pieces that you're aware of, the better you can be prepared, the better you can uh, kind of figure out, okay, what's what's the next move? How do I best prepare myself and my family and my finances for the future? So don't be caught off guard, guys. Don't be caught off guard and don't let them lie to you, you know? Um, and, um, you know, it, proper preparation is education too. It's education, is economic finance, it's economic preparation. So anyway, guys, I just want to share this little bit of insight with you. Uh, lots more information I want to share. If you made it this far in this video, drop a like for the video. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe even share this video with somebody who you think could benefit from it. But uh, hit me up in the, in the comments down below. I'll also leave my email address if you want to send me something private. You don't want to uh, ask the question in front of everyone. But uh, yeah, I'll continue to drop more information that I think is helpful for you, uh, for my community. Um, and uh, we're going to make it through this, guys. Stay positive. Stay awesome.